Hello everybody, I'm Claire Steves and from the Zoe COVID study and from King's College London and I'm going to give you this week's update because Tim is currently enjoying some time off so I'll be taking you through the latest data and insights and first of all we'll be talking about the latest COVID numbers and then talking a bit about Omicron, um, something about newly sick infections uh, from other things other than COVID, um, a bit of uh, in depth about school children and vaccination. And then finally, we'll be finishing with looking ahead at the new year and what we should be prioritizing in the year ahead. So here's the data this week. Um, the total cases are at over 192,000 per day, with um, nearly 80,000 of those in people who've been double vaccinated. So we've estimated that about 160,000 daily Omicron cases um, are in England, which is 92% of all estimated English cases. Um, now, that's a 33% increase on last week. And in the double vaccinated, this takes up 41% of the total new daily cases. Um, so most people who are getting COVID now might be vaccinated in some way or other. One in 32 people have COVID. And um, the average number of weekly deaths from COVID were 887. And that's an increase of nearly 200 people from the last week. Um, so it's clear to see that the rise in cases is now translating into more rises in deaths. And hospitalization, hospitalizations too are going up. Um, 1,171 people were admitted to hospital last week from COVID um, and 842 were on ventilators. This number thankfully has gone down since last week. So let's have a little bit of a think back um, to this time last year. So in this graphic, you can see right the way back to January 2021, um, when the number of daily, uh, daily new cases was actually much lower than it is now. Um, and it was about that level in October. But of course, the number of hospitalizations was vastly lower. And that's really down to vaccination rollout. Thanks to vaccines, we've had far fewer hospitalizations and deaths um, all the way through the autumn season. But now with Omicron, things are really um, ranking up. Um, the, the case rate is really rising. And I don't think we can be too complacent about this new variant. With this number of cases, hospitalizations are now rising too. Ministers um, were reportedly thinking about a warning threshold of being about 400 cases in the capital to bring in new restrictions. And looking at the government data right now, it looks like we're going to be at that threshold by New Year's Eve. So now on to the different regions of the UK. And as you can see in these graphs, cases are now rising in all regions of the UK. In orange here, London continues to be the region with the highest rates. Um, and it's a bit here, hard to see what's going on in the northwest, which has an R value of 1.3 and is seeing a steep increase as well. So here's an interesting graph about Omicron, which is actually not our data. It's from NHS England, but it shows the um, percentage of the S gene dropout, the S gene target failure, um, which is the gene that Omicron doesn't have. And so um, when you're doing a PCR test, you can see the, um, the percentage that are failing to have that S gene, um, and that gives you approximation of the number of Omicron cases. And you can see that just like Alpha took over um, back last year, and then Delta took, back, uh, took, took over in the summer, now it seems that Omicron is really taking over, um, being over 90% of the cases in London and other regions really catching up as well. Um, so as you know from Tim's video last week, we've been really keen to look at the symptoms of Omicron. And really what we're finding is very much the same as we reported last week, but further data really confirming this. Um, so the important thing is that the classic symptoms of fever, cough and loss of smell are much less prevalent in the current positive cases. We're seeing a really big drop in the importance of a loss of sense of smell now. Um, so just over a month ago, it was in the top 10 of symptoms, but now it's ranking 26 on the list. And it appears that in Omicron, loss of sense of smell may be less of a cardinal feature. I think that's really important for everybody to know because you can't be relying on a loss of smell to be the thing that gives a pointer to you that you've got Omicron. We'll look at the other symptoms. So sore throat, really important symptom. As we've seen with all vaccination cases, actually sneezing seems to become a symptom of um, uh, COVID now, and headache and fatigue have remained at the top all the way through. 
So this graph uh, shows the number of people with non-COVID colds, which is in the orange graph, has go been going down and going down since um, perhaps the first two weeks of December. Um, however, the number of COVID cases is really rising rapidly. So according to the Zoe COVID figures, 70%, um, 75% of new onset respiratory infections or colds are actually COVID. Um, it's really keen, to, nice to see, isn't it? That sort of drop in newly sick people from other illnesses other than COVID. And that's, to be honest, probably because of people changing their behavior, schools having come out, but people maybe being a little bit more cautious about not mixing so much. And that's had a real effect on non-COVID respiratory disease, but it's not really had a very significant effect on the COVID cases. We are pleased to see that they're no longer showing an exponential decline an exponential incline, but they are still growing at a linear rate. So um, the things that we've done so far have been enough to maybe slow the really steep incline of Omicron, but they haven't put it to bed entirely. So let's have a look at what's happening in different age groups. Um, so here you can see um, that um, in school age children, so this is the blue graph, We've had a very uh, nice looking decline over the last few days, and that's probably because schools are coming out. And again, in the 18 to 35 year olds, it does appear to be hitting a peak, which is why maybe we can see in the overall graphs a slight slowing more recently, which is um, very good to see. But the worrying thing is here in the red, people who are over the age of 55, um, the numbers are inclining. And it's that uh, particular group of people that are particularly relevant in terms of hospitalizations and more severe consequences of COVID. So I think we're not out of the woods yet. So moving on now to think about ch children and vaccination. Um, some really good news in the last week, just before Christmas, the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation finally decided that the Pfizer COVID vaccine can be given to primary school aged children if they are either themselves vulnerable or if they have a household contact, um, they're a household contact of someone who is immunocompromised. Um, so that's a great step forward and brings us in more in line with other countries like the US, Spain and France, who've been vaccinating the over fives for some time now. Um, it's going to be a, a great help when schools go back as well, which is likely to bring another surge in cases. If you've got someone who's immunocompromised in your family circle, then it really makes sense um, to get the children in your family group vaccinated. I'll be vaccinating my children as soon as I can, um, as they need to be in school. And also vaccination will reduce the risk of long COVID, which is still there in school aged children. In the meantime, however, I think we will have a rocky path ahead when schools do go back, given the number of infections and the need for isolation of school teachers and other staff if they're infected. OK, so we're all just gearing up for the last celebration of the year. Um, there's no further restrictions that have been brought in place in England, at least. And um, so it's all about balancing personal safety. Um, and the need to put 2021 to bed in an appropriate manner. Um, so here is really back to symptoms, symptoms, symptoms. As I've shown you, um, the data really clearly shows that 75% of new cold-like symptoms are actually COVID. And those classic symptoms are now much less com common. So if you know someone who has a sore throat, um, uh, advise them to get tested. Make sure you test yourself as well and avoid spreading it to others. Remember, if you log your symptoms in the Zoe um, COVID app, you will be invited for a PCR test um, if you've got any of the new symptoms. I really hate us to waste the gains that we've given ourselves in the last week or so, where we've really slowed that exponential decline to a much more linear decline. Maybe it's showing signs of turning the corner soon. Um, so it's really important that in the next few days we keep um, as safe as we can, keep the parties small, don't turn up to something if you've got a cold-like um, symptoms. And if you're going somewhere, then take a test just before you go. For me, the next year is going to all be about maximising our immunity across generations, across all sections of society, and across the world too. If we raise the overall level of immunity within the community, we'll be able to get to a place where we can start to live with the virus because it's not going away. Vaccinating children and making sure we keep up with boosters are going to be key ways of getting greater immunity in the UK. But this is a global pandemic and we need to be looking out to other countries and helping vaccination programmes across the world to increase global immunity levels and help reduce the risk of future variants.
But to get through the next few weeks, I think we urgently need to sort out the rules about how soon someone who gets COVID can return to work. For this to happen, we really need more information and research on the amount of time a fully vaccinated person um, is actually infectious for, especially for health and social care workers and school staff, so they can get back to work as soon as possible. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to be informed um, as soon as a video goes live, that's the way for us to do it. Please keep logging in the app. I wish you all a happy new year and thank you for listening. Stay safe and keep logging.